Another fat world e-bike, but a slightly different one. This model here from DYU is called the King 750, and it has larger 26 inch rims with the four inch wide fat tires. So they're knobbly tires, the brand, pretty much like always now is Chow Yang, and they make a lot of noise when you're riding around on them. They have poor rolling resistance, but off-road they give you a lot of traction and they're very comfortable, spongy tires, these fat tires. The bike's got plastic mud guards. This is a good thing because they do not chip and you don't have to worry about them rusting, which can happen later on. Of course, the supports for them, they are made out of metal. Now we do have seven gears. It's the Shimano Tourney they are using. It's either that, the Dior or the Altus, very common. It works, it does the job. The Duralia alignment seems to be fine out of the box and they do have a guard for it to stop it from being damaged. The brand of Rare Hub Motor is a DAAO. It does have a maximum output of 900 watts peak. The nominal rating is 750 watts and 75 newton meters of torque. DYU is using a KMC Z chain and the front crank here has 46 teeth. This bike doesn't come with a torque sensor, so sometimes when you pedal, it can be a little slow to give you that power. And that's probably why they installed the throttle with it and the fact that you could use it just more like a motorcycle, like a moped. These pedals here, they are an HF brand. They seem to be all right, no complaints. DYU did the right thing and they installed larger 180 millimeter discs and the hydraulic brakes, well these are no brand but they do seem to work well and you see later on with my emergency braking test. Sadly it does not have a quick release for the front hub so if you do get a flat you're going to have to bring along the tools to be able to remove the front wheel and fix a puncher. I highly recommend you just carry one of those emergency puncher repair bottles if you're riding a lot and that will of course need to have the Schrader valve. It's normally used for cars but does work really well for these fat tires which don't normally get punctures. Something else that is also very common is a front shock that has no branding on it. So it's not a Sun Tour, not a Rock Shock, not a Fox. It's a no brand, but it's quite a good one for the no brand shocks. The travel is reasonable. It's not a lot. You get about 40 to 50 millimeters or so, and it works well. It's certainly better than having no shock, and it's a very solid shock at that. Now it does have adjustable preload, and you can lock it out completely. And why the lower half of the frame is so wide, and that's because there is a very large battery in this. So it's 20 amp hours located here. I have seen this battery before, so it shouldn't be too hard to source replacements, even if later DYU doesn't have them themselves because other brands do use this. Now it's locked into place, that's a good thing. So when you insert the key and then you go to unlock it, it won't completely just fall out onto the ground. No, there's a little release right here so you need to pull on that and then the battery drops out. You don't have a lot of room because of the mud guard there in the tire, but you just pull it up a bit and then that whole large 20 amp hour algae cell too, by the way, battery can be removed. Charge time of this 20 amp hour battery is approximately seven hours. There is a little battery gauge on the top of it. So pressing this, you can see if it's fully charged or not. And again, it's great that they have used algae battery cells in this. A lot of brands simply don't state which brand or cell they're using. And that is because it'll just be generic Chinese cells. So not your South Korean, Samsung or LG, which tend to be the best. Inserting our big boy 20 amp hour battery isn't too difficult, but you do need to slot it up like so. There's a small little like latch at the bottom you need to hook in and then it locks into place. The King 750 has a very comfortable wide seat and it does have a shock absorber in it. Now I've seen this with a few other models. So when you're sitting on it, occasionally you'll feel it drop down a little bit and help soak up some of those bumps. In the beginning, it is off-putting, especially if you're used to having a fixed normal seat post. Once you get used to it, it's actually great and makes a ride a lot more comfortable. It does have quite a bit of sponge to it, the seat. So it's overall a good combination for those out there that want smooth, comfortable, cruisy riding. The front headlight has a powerful single LED within it and the brightness is adequate. It's definitely not the best I have reviewed or covered but it seems to do the job just fine. Now this bike does not include a tower light or even a rear reflector. There are however reflectors in the spokes of each of the rims. 
Most of the cabling with the bike is internal. This gives it a more cleaner look. And they kept with that motorcycle theme with the display, so it is very large. So we have our power, battery, trip, odometer, speed, pedal assist level, and hard to see, but this is my light. It can tell me that I've got the front headlight on. I like this screen. It's really large, clear, and gives you all of that information just at first glance. It's backlit too. So time now to see what this bike is like to ride and how comfortable is it? How does that pedal assist work and the throttle? The King 750 is a large frame bike. Now it's not gonna be for very short riders, I think from about uh, 160 centimeters under, you might struggle a little bit with that seat post position, even though the frame does slope down a bit. Now when I'm sitting on this bike, very comfortable, lots of room in me. My knees, there's no way my knees are gonna be striking uh, the handlebars, even with the sharpest of turns. No, I won't have a problem there. So the speed sensor, this is my really only complaint with this bike. And when you start to pedal, one, two, there we go. It's finally giving me the assistance. So it's a little slow to react. Now, of course, to overcome that, if you're gonna be using it and you can legally, is the throttle. So you just twist that and away you go. Now the limit of what you're gonna do speed-wise with this throttle will depend on the pedal assist level you are in. So it is one up to three, and each one of those levels has a different uh, speed limit to it. Now, if you have an unlocked model, then you can get up to about 45 kilometers per hour with just the throttle and also with the pedal assist. So once you're going, the pedal assist is fine. So I'm pedaling now, as soon as I stop pedaling now, is another second delay or so before the speed sensor detects that you're not pedaling anymore and then it cuts the power so it can be a little slow to react with that but the upright position of this bike the size of it the fat wheels and then that seat post with the shock in it makes this ride very comfortable and it feels more like a just a, a cruising kind of bike for those of you that want to relax a little bit cruise along in comfort upright comfortable you're not gonna get a sore back with this bike. So you certainly feel the motor cutting in and out. You feel the weight of the bike, so it's 31 kilos, but it doesn't feel front heavy or as heavy as some of the other bikes I've reviewed. It feels a little more balanced. So the top speed of the bike, when you've got it limited to 25 kilometers per hour, that's where it, you'll feel that motor cut out. And when I try to pedal as fast as possible now in the seventh gear, of course, it's a little hard to get it up to around 28, 29 kilometers per hour. So that's about my comfortable cruising speed now at around 29 kilometers per hour. And it's fine for this as long as you're on the flat. So climb test now, and it's got a 750 watt motor that peaks at 900 watts. I do now have it in pedal assist level number three. So that's the maximum pedaling up here in the seventh gear. I don't need to lower the gears down. It's got a lot of power. This is very easy. It's doing now 15, 16 kilometers per hour. I'm putting almost next to nothing in terms of effort in. I'll stop pedaling now and just use the throttle. That is about the same because it's getting steeper here. This is about a 20, 25 degree climb. And that's at 14, 15 kilometers climbing still and now completely turning off the motor. So I'll put it to a pedal assist level zero. In fact, you can't put it into zero. I have to turn it off and I'm in the lowest gear. So that is now off. Oh, wow, <laughs> do you notice that? So trying to get up this hill oh, with the 31 kilos weight, these fat tires, this gearing, Yikes, this is very hard going without that motor. I need to turn that back on or I'm just not gonna make it. There we go, straight away notice when the motor's back on, it suddenly becomes easy again. And now my braking test. So from approximately 30 kilometers per hour, full on braking, emergency braking test from this post. So we've got 180 mil disc brakes and wow fantastic really good so i made it before this post a lot of bikes can't some of them go around about here's the average about here where they stop but no the braking performance on this for no name hydraulic disc brakes they work well 
good bite from the brake pads, didn't really require too much bedding in at all, and overall great. And then of course 180 millimeters, larger than the typical 160 millimeters I see, braking performance with the King 750 is excellent. Some of you wonder why my bikes look so clean in my videos. Well, this is because I wash them to make them look clean in the video, but be warned, with pressure washers especially, do not wash around the motor, the plugs, the battery pack, or the top screen, because you will be asking for trouble. I just normally clean the tires. Range, it's one of the more important things with an e-bike. And often we see these range claims are completely over-exaggerated. There are very few companies and DYU with this model is one of them too that haven't over exaggerated the range claims. So they say you can get 59 kilometers, sorry, 59 miles or 80 kilometers out of a full charge. And you can, you definitely can. If you use pedal assist level one and two, which I've been doing, for every battery bar that I lose on the screen, I cover normally about 21 to 24 kilometers. So the range is just fantastic. If I took it nice and easy, I think I'll be able to get at least over 100 kilometers with this, which is exceeding their range claims. That's very rare, we don't normally see that. So as you probably gathered by now, I do like this bike. I like the look of it, the style, the large frame, the comfortable upright ride, the dampener with the seat post here, turns out to be comfortable, the seat. And it's a little off-putting in the beginning when you first feel this. You go down the curb and it, whoa, oh, hang on. Uh, my seat post just failed on me. The quick release is too loose. No, it's the seat. And then you realize that. Braking performance, 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes work really well. As you saw from that braking test, it made it and stopped before that pillar there, the column, those bricks. And a lot of bikes can't do that. So it has above average braking performance. There are no brand brakes. This is also a no brand shock on the front, but it's a very good one. There are no annoying rattles or a clunk noise is coming out of it. No, it's good. You can lock it out completely. The tires, Chow Yang, very common. See a lot of them now. Knobbly tread pattern, they are fine. And it is a bike that I feel is great for just cruising around town. City commutes, not really off-road. I mean, it doesn't have a frame or rear suspension. It's not a downhill competition kind of bike at all. Not that you'd expect it to be, but all up, big thumbs up from me. The DYU, the only real thing from this is the speed sensor, the weight and the speed sensor. Speed sensor can sometimes be a little slow to kick in. That is the only fault that I can find with this fantastic bike here, the King 750.